Hi guys. So, um, I have tried to think of so many different ways to say this. I have even tried to maybe write it down, but then I changed my mind because it needs to be genuine and it needs to be exactly, it needs to be heard when I say it. It needs to it needs my emotions with it. And before I get on with what I'm going to say, please know that I am not asking for pity or sympathy or special treatment or looking for attention. A lot of people are just going to think that, which really makes me mad because I am not one of those people. I am not saying what I'm going to say for attention or anything like that. This is genuinely my story. This is what I've been through. This is what I've felt. And I know I'm not the only one that's felt it. And that's why I want to say it. Because I have lied to so many of my family. So many people in my family and even my friends. Like tonight, I went out with my friends and just hung out. And I had a great time. I did. But... About midway, again, went to Walmart. About midway through Walmart, I just had this wave of depression. And they asked me if I was okay. You know what I said? I said I was fine. I said I was okay. I said nothing was wrong. That was a lie. In reality, I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't know where these emotions come from. And I know a lot of people feel that way. So I'm hoping this helps as I have two messages and I will get to those at the end, but I hope that these two messages help at least one person That's all I want. Um... <sighs> In 2012, October 29th, 2012, my grandpa passed away. I wear his ring around my neck with two others from loved ones that have passed away. We buried him on Halloween. He was my hero. He seemed to be the only person I had to talk to. So I took his death really hard. When he passed away, it's like part of me died with him. I emotionally and mentally died with him. <laughs> and within like a year of that, I started cutting myself. And a lot of people think I stopped my senior year of high school. I didn't. I just now stopped two months ago and I knew my parents were disappointed in me. I was disappointed in myself, but prior to my grandpa, my papa passing away, I loved horror and Halloween and writing. God, I love to write. But after he passed away, I, I left all of that. I still loved my horror and a few things i done. I still tried to write, but I really didn't want to. And that part of me faded away. All of me pretty much faded away. And that's when the cutting began. I have scars still from that. I have refused to go over to my friend's pool because of those scars. I have refused to do so many things because of those scars. And 
It's not that I regret it. Because I don't. I regret not talking to someone. I regret not being truthful with my family. When I honestly believe they truly cared. Even though I know there are some that will push me away. And there are probably some that will look down on me. But then those are the ones I don't really want in my life. Honestly. Because if they push me away because of the struggles I'm going through. Because I am human and can break. Why do I want that? Why does anyone want that? And... I don't know. I mean, to all of you that cut or have cut or want to cut, I know how you feel. And I know you hear that a lot. But I am genuinely here to tell you I know how you feel. I know what it's like to not want to get out of bed. I know what it's like to be bullied at school and not want to go. You fake being sick so you won't have to go, but then your parents know you're faking and send you anyway. I know what it's like to want to take that last breath. But please hang on. Because the next point I'm going to make is the point I am recently dealing with every day. This right here. Craft Fair Games. Ryan Sheffield. Brad Dewar. I look up to them. And honestly, more Ryan Sheffield because he has books online that I read. And these two guys do indie games. Do DIY indie games themselves. And to me, that is the most incredible thing ever. And they are the reason I am still holding on. They are the reason I am still alive. And they are the reason that reason I stopped cutting myself two months ago. Almost three. They are the reasons I'm able to get this. My semicolon. Because my story isn't over. I'm still writing my story. And I am really wanting to know how it ends. I literally owe my life to them. They are the reason I don't really fake a smile anymore. And a lot of my family and even my friends don't understand that. They can't seem to place themselves in my shoes to understand that. I know I have family, you know, that's not in Texas that care about me. I know I have people right next to me that care about me. But sometimes that's not enough. Sometimes you need an inspiration. You need a motivation. You need, you need hope. They are my hope. They are my reason. And I can't express that enough. So if you feel like you want to end your life, please know that there is something out there to let you keep going. There is your reason to keep going. There is your inspiration. There is your motivation. There is your hope. It has took me so long to finally say this. And I will keep saying it. I have never met those guys. I have never met Ryan Sheffield and Brad Dewar in my entire life. I have never met them. But yet they are still my reason. So it is possible. If you look up to that celebrity, look up to that celebrity. If you like anime, then you like anime. You are not your definition of what... You are not the world's definition. You are your definition. Don't let the world bring down your passions. Yeah, just because you haven't met that celebrity, that means you can't look up to them, right? No. No, that is not how it works. You are you. Be it. What fun is life if you go around caring what other people think? 
And for all of you, while I'm on this subject, for all of you people saying, oh, you're overweight, so you must be unhealthy, what about all of you people that are the exact weight you're supposed to be that are unhealthy? What's your excuse? I'm tired of people saying, oh, she's big, she's fat, and that means she's unhealthy. No, that's not what that means. You are not your, the definition of what society wants you to be. You are not fat. You are not ugly. Everyone is beautiful in their own way, and it takes special people to see that. I want everyone out there right now to picture themselves in their darkest moments. What are you most afraid of? Seriously, what are you most afraid of? Imagine the entire world being that. Imagine every single person, okay, you're afraid of clowns. Imagine every single person being a clown. You'd be scared for your life, wouldn't you? Because that's your worst fear. Imagine people that cut themselves because they were called fat or because they were called too skinny or too ugly or because you put down their passions or what they care about. That is how they feel. Like they're surrounded by everything that is their deepest fear. That is how I felt. And I know I'm not the only one. This is my story and I'm going to tell it through my eyes. Not through what the guy next door wants me to be. Or through what those magazines and TV shows want me to be. I am me and I'm not going to change. Yeah, I may have changed a little bit growing up. But I mean, come on, who doesn't? Seriously, it's called developing your own personality. I have scars. Not even just self-harming scars. I have scars from, I don't know, like baking cookies and a curling iron from when I was little. Those scars are my story. I have stories to tell about those, even though I don't remember the curling iron one. But my mom does, so technically it's her story that it happened to me. I don't know. My point is, you have your own story. Know how it ends. And don't, and for all of you people that go around dissing everyone because of what they care about, if they like, if they are 17 and they like My Little Pony, let them like it. You're not them. How do you know that there's not stories in, I don't know, Spongebob that a 17-year-old can relate to? I don't know, even Dora. I don't know. But there are different stories for everyone. Everyone has their own beginning. And everyone has their own end. Don't let in between be miserable. Don't let your insecurities bring down someone else. And if you cut, or have thought about it, or used to, please don't again, or keep doing it, or start doing it. I may have said that I don't regret mine. Because I am proud of that they are just scars now. But for me to get to the point to where I have done it, don't let yourself get to that point. I am here to say that if anyone needs just an ear to listen, because I'm not going to give you advice. I'm not. I'm not here to tell you that, oh, it's okay. It's all going to be okay. I'm not going to do that. Because I have, I have been told that. And it's not something you want to hear. What you want is an ear to listen and for someone to say, I'm here. What you want is a hope. I was able to find mine. Mine happened to be in Denton, Texas. Through this, which I will do a video about later. But like I said, it took me two weeks. To finally do this video. And I am so glad I did. Because I had so much to say. And. If anyone. 
still thinks I'm doing this for pity or sympathy or special attention, then you're not even worth my time. Is that seriously what you think? I'm not kidding. All I ask is for one person to get help through this. That's all I ask. And if anyone wants to judge me for it, then judge me. Your words cannot hurt me no more than my blade did. And I'm not going back to my old ways. I'm not going to do it. Because haters, you'll never win. You may think you're winning, but in the end, you're just pathetic. That's all I have to say on that situation. Because I finally said what I had to say, and I finally told my story. Question is, what are you going to do now?